Watch me rip this shirt! <laughs> I'm Brittany Gorris. I live in a Ford Econoline. I am a professional rock climber. Keep dreaming, stay hungry, and remember that there is no finish line. Welcome to my van. I drive a Ford Econoline from 2003 and I've lived in it since last October. I've been climbing almost 20 years. In the years that followed college, I started to climb outside more. The more I climbed outside, the more it became my life's passion. This is the kitchen setup. It's pretty basic. I have a fridge that runs off solar panels. I started to realize I just wasn't satisfied with the amount that I was able to do while living in a large city. There's a battery in here that's just a general kind of car battery. Logistically, it was rather easy to transition into living in a van and working remotely. Emotionally, a little less so. The fridge is hooked up to it that runs all the time, and then there's also an inverter that I turn on that powers these lights. For many years, I was sort of held back by thoughts that living in a van, being a dirtbag and climbing all the time was something not for me. I thought I was sort of destined for a status quo life. And so it took me a really long time to sort of shake off the idea that that was who I was supposed to be and to embrace the fact that I can choose who I wanna be. Then I've got my stove which came with the van, so it's got a few flaws. It doesn't have dials, so I have to use these pliers. The best part about living in my van is meeting other people that live in vans. I love to travel, not just because of seeing new places, but because of all the people I meet. You spend so much time with people because you, you're parked next to them. They become like family so quickly because you share everything. You share food, you share your space, you share like all of these experiences on a daily basis. It just builds such strong connections between people. I feel so much more connected to people than I did. I have a, a propane small one gallon thing down here then this is kind of where i keep a lot of my food the worst part about living in a van is the constant anxiety of the van breaking immediately after i bought the van i also had to do a couple major repairs i just didn't trust my van for a while and, and a lot of times on longer drives i stress out a lot about getting stranded somewhere this is a certificate i got for being the big loser in a game we played in joshua tree this winter so we have that on one side, and then on the other side, a slightly different tone was when I was on the cover of Climbing Magazine. So <laughs> both things I'm equally proud of. I have a hard time finding easy ways to work because my battery doesn't have enough power to charge my laptop whenever I want. I've done some pretty ridiculous things like running an extension cord all the way across the parking lot. I was sitting inside a rest stop for an entire day to be able to charge my laptop. I'll just go wash like one thing at the laundromat so that I can use their power. I've sort of learned a lot of creative ways to, to get around that. In the summer I have this little air conditioning unit that just runs off of a USB. And then in the winter I have a little propane heater I think one of the most ridiculous things that's happened to me since I started living in a van is I just always am looking for flat spots. I could be, you know, in someone else's van driving to the crag. I just look out the window and I see like a field or something. And my brain just has this mode now that it's always in where it sees that and it's like, ooh, a nice flat spot. I could park there. I could have a flat place to sleep. I'm not going to sleep there. I'm at like, I don't know, the grocery store. I just have this appreciation for like flat pieces of earth. The seat is not a swivel. I just bolted it on backwards because uh, swivels cost $300 and it's free to flip your seat around. 
<laughs> I've been in Vitavu for two months. Came here for a couple reasons, but one of the main reasons was to try a finger crack called Home on the Range. It's a beautiful climb. It's really short, but you do a lot of moves in that short distance, so it feels a lot longer than it is. It's on this perfect orange rock, that, and the feet are garbage. The crack is super flared. You walk up to it, and it looks like a 510 hand crack, but it's actually 13 plus, 14 minus, like the hardest crack climb in Wyoming. It's like ridiculous the kind of moves that I have to do to get through. A lot of climbing gear, my backpack, uh, and this large bag of bones. Uh, <laughs> I collect bones and I paint them. This whole year, climbers have been sort of shamed for being out climbing because of the coronavirus, which has been really hard. When you live in a van and you've dedicated your life to pursuing something and then your community is telling you, go home. But where is home when you live in your van? I can't go park in my parents' driveway. It's not really safe for my parents. I came to Vitavu also as a part of just looking for somewhere I could be, somewhere safe and somewhere that felt like home. Here this climb is named Home on the Range because it's on the front range which I actually grew up an hour from here in Fort Collins, so it kind of is like coming home anyway. I, I really think the name means a lot to me too, even though it doesn't mean that much. It's just a name. My bed is has a ridiculously thick mattress that's memory foam. I actually just bought it off Craigslist for 50 bucks, and it happened to be the perfect size because the mattress that came with this van was like this thin, and uh, I didn't sleep very well on it. So this bed came built out with the van and it is my exact height which is five foot eleven if I sleep horizontally so if I want to sleep more than one person in here they kind of need to be my height or shorter or else we have to sleep diagonal but if I'm alone then I sleep diagonally very comfortably. I've been a professional climber for a few years. I think living on the road is the best way to do it. For me, being a professional climber sort of means using my climbing to inspire other people. In order to do that, I just need to be climbing all the time and interacting with other climbers and trying to teach them what I know and learn from them. And it really just comes down to trying to use my actions and my climbing to leave a positive impact on the people around me. This is where I keep my water, it just has this pump on top. I think it costs five bucks. It's got a little seat belt that's attached to a part of the bed frame that stops it from moving around when I'm driving. If you look around my van, you'll notice a couple Todd Skinner quotes. And often when people ask me who inspires me in my climbing, that's one of the people that really comes to mind. I climbed a climb in Washington called City Park that was originally put up by Todd Skinner. The more I started to learn about what that ascent meant, the more I started to learn about who a lot of the climbers were from the 70s and 80s and 90s. And I became really interested in that era of climbing because that was sort of when climbing was changing a lot and the ethics were changing. It was really transitioning into what it is today. The the person leading that charge was Todd Skinner. And I have a lot of climbing gear in here. It's a haul bag I bought to climb in Yosemite that I've never actually used. And then all my trad gear kind of usually goes in here. It's a little chaotic at the moment. And then I've got a bunch of shoes. Most of them are pretty blown out. He was like a, a dirt bag. He lived in a van. He had a skull in his van. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> and uh, he traveled the world. He was one of the first professional climbers. He had this stay hungry tour where he would have people photograph him doing hard climbs. And, and then he would give these slideshows all over the country. And that was how he supported himself. He was the first person to free climb El Capitan in Yosemite via the Salafe headwall. So many legendary iconic things were accomplished by this person that, that represents everything I want in my life. I want to travel, I want to meet people, I want to inspire people and be friendly and a leader through my actions. Even though I, I never met him, he represents all of that to me. A lot of the things that he has said sort of really motivate me to not take my dreams and put them on a shelf for someday when I think I'm stronger or when things will be easier. It inspires me to take action now and to pursue my dreams now because that's all that I have, you know? Uh, everything you ever wanted to do is still possible. It's only you that says it can't be done, but you better get on it because time waits for no one. <laughs>